Hi everyone, so today we're gonna do some nail stamping over multi-chrome nail polish. This polish I'm using is from Brazilian brand Hits and it's called Iris. Before I get started, I'm just gonna go over with acetone over my nails. Uh, some people use like a dehydrator. This is basically just to get rid of any oils or anything in your nail so that the polish adheres better. Uh, to go over with the acetone, I'm using a precision brush. This is just like a makeup brush for the eyes. We're going to dip it in acetone and just put it over our nails one by one, making sure you cover all the nails, uh, a little bit of the skin on the side, the cuticles, just to get rid of any oils that could get in the way of your manicure looking great. I will speed up some of these sections here because I am really slow, but I'll make sure to leave at least the first nail or the last nail at normal speed, just so you guys have some idea of how long that process takes. After that, I'm going to go over with the base coat. I'm using Ont Takeoff, which is a peel-off base coat, uh, just because I'm using a lot of nail polish and uh, afterwards just make it easier to remove so I don't have to use acetone as much. So again going over each nail with a very thin coat of the base coat. On the thumb here you can see how slow I am, that's at normal speed and I just turned the brush because I did have like blobs of base coat on both sides. Uh, not a great application but it works, you know. Uh, and after we put on the base coat while we waited for it to dry, uh, Ont recommends I think about six to seven minutes, we're gonna open our stamping nail plate. This is from Nicole Diary and it has some dragonfly designs which I think are gonna match pretty well with the multi-chrome. And the first thing we're gonna do is remove that like blue protection cover that it has. I use tweezers for that because I think it helps. Just be careful because uh, the tweezers like mine are metal. I want to make sure I'm not scraping any of the plate with those tweezers. So I just use it to help me get started and after that peel it off by myself. One thing to be careful with these plates also, this is metal and it's really thin metal. So when you hold it like I'm holding right there, uh, be careful because if that slips, it can uh, hurt your fingers and can cut your fingers and yes, it has happened to me twice. So yeah, just be careful. Some plates have a protection cover like the Born Pretty ones, but these Nicole Diary ones don't have it. And now that our base coat is dry, I'm gonna go over it with the multi-chrome polish. Some people like to do the multi-chrome over black. I personally like how it looks by itself. For this one, I use about three coats. And this, again, is Iris by Brazilian brand Hits. I really like this one. It's a very green, and then it has some shades of pink, some shades of gold. It just gives a really nice effect. And you will see I'm skipping my ring finger because my plan was to use a different multi-chrome for that one, but I messed it up. Spoiler alert, as you guys will see. But that's the reason why I'm skipping it. My intention was to do like a accent nail on that one didn't quite work. Now going in with the second coat over the nails, you guys can see it starts to build up. If you are wearing black underneath it, you probably can do just one coat of the multi-chrome and one coat of the black under it. So if you don't like as many layers on your nail, that could be an approach for you. But again, I personally like the way it looks with just the multi-chromes. you're wrapping the tip uh, when you're putting on the nail polish that's what I do like that last step you can see me uh, putting the brush on the tip of the nail that helps it stay longer and when I mess up a little bit I go in with my uh, steel stick just to clean it up while the polish is still wet because if you waited for it to dry it's just gonna be harder to do the cleanup This is what it looks like with three coats. Uh, you can see that multi-chrome very well. Like I see a lot of the gold, a lot of the pink. And now for my ring finger, this is where I messed up. The plan was to do a different multi-chrome, but I put on the same one for some reason. I didn't notice it was the same one. 
Meanwhile, while I'm waiting to go over the second coat on that one, I'm doing the top coat on the other fingers. I'm using Diamond Gel by Brazilian brand Hisque. It is not a gel polish. It just says like it's gel effect, so you don't need to cure it or anything. It's just a regular top coat. Now the second layer of the same polish on the ring finger. And on the third coat, I notice and try to fix my mistakes there. And I grab the right color, which is that one. Also by Brazilian brand Hits and is called Ossipiti. And that one uh, has some more flakes of like a pink and purple. It also has a little bit of the green and a little bit of the gold in there, but I do see a lot of the pinks and purples. It won't come off uh, as much because we are doing it over the other multi-chrome. If I had done three layers of that one, it would come off uh, a lot more pinky. And there you can see a little bit of the difference. Again, it is very subtle because I did do two layers of the wrong polish. Going in with the top coat, I'm just using that quick dry top coat to protect the nail and make it dry faster for us to put the stamping over it. Now this is time to stamp. I did wait for it to dry a little bit before getting into that. And yeah, this is a beautiful plate. I think it's going to work great with the multi-chrome. It looks like the wings of the dragonflies. And for my stamping, I have a silicone mat, which is actually from like cooking for you to use with pots and pans, but it works just fine. It's really good for cleaning your scraper and then you can just peel off the polish uh, from the silicone and just to you know, be a support for your plate. Now I'm checking to make sure everything is dry. That is not gonna mess up my polish underneath it. I am using stamping specific polish from Brazilian brand Carimbos de Unha. You don't need to use a specific stamping nail polish, but it's good because those are opaque, very opaque. If you do have regular nail polish that you know is opaque enough, it could work as well. But stamping nail polish is basically the same price, so I like to use it. I do have like a sinful colors, which is called black on black, which I think might work. It is a one coat black, so maybe it would work for stamping. You can always test it out to see if yours is gonna work or not. And I try to just bounce the stamper over the plate to pick up the design nicely. And for my pinky nail, I'm picking up that design that mimics the wings of the dragonfly and just seeing it where I'm placing it. I did mess up a little bit. You will see that the tip of my nail brushes up against the stamper and picks up the design right there. And it generates like a little gap on it there right before I stamp. Uh, so be careful. That's why I have a gap at the top. I also did have a gap at the bottom that I didn't really like with that stamping, but it's fine. I was trying to check how I could make as little of a mess as possible but we can always clean it up later. I'll show you guys how. Now for my ring finger, I wanted to pick up one of the more single designs, not the ones that are all over the nail, the more detailed ones. And I really like this dragonfly that has kind of like a halo effect. I thought it was gonna look good on the more pink magenta uh, color that we used on the ring finger. And I'm using a Born Pretty stamper. It's like a clear silicone stamper. You can use any you like. I like the clear ones because you can see where you are stamping. And in between designs, I just clean that on adhesive surface. I use a lint roller for that. Never use like acetone or polish removal on your stamper. Now moving over for the thumb design. And as you guys can see, I'm not cleaning my plate in between. I'm just making sure I'm scraping not scraping over any design I want to use later. And then I can just clean it once uh, once I'm done. I find that easier. It's not always possible depending on the designs you want to use, but makes it easier. And I really like this design. It's like a big dragonfly in the forefront and a smaller one in the back. And here's why I really like the clear stamper because then you can do what I'm doing right now, which is checking which orientation is going to look better and what part of the design I want to stamp on the nail. I personally like to do the design uh, facing me that way. So, you know, with the top part at the outside of my nail and the bottom part near the cuticle. Some people like to do the other way around, like the upside down version of that. But 
really you can do what you think looks prettier and you can do it like sideways, upside down. I personally like it having it facing me in that orientation. Now for my index finger, I try to pick up this entire nail design, which is a bunch of little fireflies, sorry, <laughs> a bunch of dragonflies. I didn't like the way it looked. You can't really see on camera, but it looks really splotchy. I can't really tell <laughs> how else to say it, but it looks like it has a lot of nail polish on it. And I tried to stamp it, but I was like, mm, I don't think that's gonna look good. So I just cleaned my stamper and clean my plate and I tried it again. I had to clean the plate here because I wanted to pick up the same design that I had tried to pick up earlier so it was like dirty with nail polish. I'm just using a cotton ball and some acetone. I might switch over to something that doesn't have as much lint I guess as a cotton ball because on this, these very small designs it leaves off some little pieces of cotton. It picks up because the designs are so detailed so I'll try to use a lint-free alternative for our next times to avoid that. And I'm just, you know, taking the opportunity to clean the rest of it as well, since I'm there and use the acetone. And there we go, to try again, you just have to wait for the acetone to dry, to pick it up again. All the stamping portions I'm doing in real time, so you guys can see it, how long it takes, even me dropping the scraper over the design, but that's fine. Uh, we can still use it, the polish is still there, we can still pick up the design, no worries. Just me being clumsy. Again, we're just gonna do a quick bounce with the stamper over the plate to pick up the design. No pressing, no going back and forth. And I know you probably can't tell the difference, but it looks much better than the first time around. And now again, just checking like which pieces are gonna look better on the nail, and then we are gonna stamp it. And this one did make a lot of a mess on my finger, but as I mentioned before, I will show you guys in a minute how to clean that up. It's no worries, really. And that cleanup you can do afterwards, even if it's dry, it's no problem. It's not like cleaning up the nail polish that you have to do while it's still wet. And for the last design for my middle finger, I'm using that one, which is also the wing of a dragonfly. And I wanted to make sure I got a little bit of the outline instead of like stamping it all over the nail. So you guys can see at the bottom, I did leave a little bit of that curve of the wing design. And there you go. This is how uh, all the designs look on the nail before the cleanup, which we'll get to in a minute. And I really like it. So for the cleanup, you're just gonna need some tape or really anything that's adhesive. And you're just gonna pick those designs up, like just stick them from your fingers. I am being very careful here to not touch the nail, especially because I have peel off base coat. And it is sped up quite a lot, uh, it is a little bit tedious. An alternative could be using liquid latex on your nails, uh, that way it's easier. I avoid doing that, again, because of the peel off base coat, it doesn't work as well. You won't be able to clean off probably all of it like I wasn't, but then we can go in and just clean the finer details with the precision brush and a little bit of acetone, as you guys will see in a minute but I tried to clean off as much as I could with the tape because the stamping nail polish is really opaque. So when you try to do that cleanup, it can stain a lot and take a lot of time to clean up with the acetone. So just be mindful of that. It's still doable. Just be mindful that it is very intense and opaque. And this is how it looks all cleaned up. I personally loved it. It turned out even better than I expected. Minus the ring finger, which I wanted to be a little more of an accent. And I'm just gonna put a top coat over it to seal the design. I really love a Sashi Vite quick dry. It dries like in a second and it looks gorgeous. One thing to be mindful of is you gotta wait for the stamping to dry a little bit before you go over 
with a top coat just to make sure you're not dragging the design or you know uh, damaging it or making it look bad and one thing I also do is I try to put a lot of top coat I'll show you guys in the thumb a little bit better but also wait for it to dry a little bit you don't want to ruin the beautiful design you just worked really hard on so here on the thumb I'm gonna show you guys you just try to pick up a lot of top coat and then instead of sliding the brush through your nail you kind of just sliding the top coat liquid uh, I hope you guys can see it so you avoid touching the brush directly to the nail that really helps to not drag the design it does mean using a lot of top coat so you guys will see I clean up a little bit with the steel uh, stick there at the end because it, it pulls up a little bit uh, in the size of my finger Apologies about the focus, by the way. I'll try to fix that on next ones. Uh, but yeah, uh, use a lot of top coat and make sure you're dragging the top coat and not actually dragging the brush through your nail. That will help you with any dragging or staining of your designs. And this is what the design looks like indoors. This is nighttime. I'm just using a ring light, a very like tiny little ring light. You can see the multi-chrome very well. And I'll show you guys in a minute what it looks like in daytime the next day. So yeah, this is what it looks like on daylight the next day. I hope you guys liked it. I'm really proud of this one. I think it came out great. And I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.